Hey guys, today in this video, I'm going to be scarifying an air 18, but I can't, I can't do it. But it's only March, I hear you say. That's not the reason I can't do it. This is the reason I can't do it. I can't do it because it's frosty. Now you don't want to be going on a lawn when it's a heavy, deep frost. This isn't too bad. It's actually quite soft, but it's best to keep off as much as you can. When it's a very light frost, you can go on, but I try to avoid it as much as I can. Now. The best time to be scarifying an air 18 is probably around April time when we've got decent temperatures and everything's growing and there's no chance of frost. But when it's just scarifying and just air 18, it's not too bad. You can do it. You can get away with it. Most of these frosts now are very light. Now we need to wait for the frost to lift. So it's typically between 10 and 11 a.m. from experience between 10 and 11 a.m. However, when we get a nice day, it's a lovely blue sky today. Um, it might be a bit early, it might be half past nine. So I need to get my van loaded, ready, because we're not at the customer's property yet. We'd look a bit silly turning up at this time. So um, as soon as the frost has lifted, I'll be getting on that lawn and cracking on. And it's one I've done before, so you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> Now, there's a very good reason why we scarify an air 8. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But I want to show you the machines. We have the lawn aerator. This is a Camon LA25. And these go up and down and punch a hole in the ground. The soil comes up and ejects out. And that punches a hole, removes a core of soil out of the ground, which relieves compaction in the ground. And when it's done evenly across the lawn, you end up with thousands of holes, which eventually close. And the pressure from the surrounding soil actually loosens up the soil. Right, and then we have the scarifier, which looks like a mower. But instead of having a blade what spins round, it actually has blades which spin around like so. And what they do, they cut grooves into the surface of the soil just touching the soil, and that removes thatch. You're going to see all this anyway, but let me show you now why we scarify and why we aerate. So, I'm going to show you a cross-section of this lawn. So that is your typical lawn. Sometimes all of this is clay. Sometimes it's sandy somewhere. Sometimes it's somewhere in between. Now you get a build up of thatch in the lawn. You see that? You see that matter there? That is thatch. Now that acts like a bath sponge. So when it rains, the water hits it and instead of going straight down to where the roots are, where it needs it, it tends to sit in that layer of thatch. And because that thatch holds moisture, that can encourage disease in the lawn because disease, like red thread, likes hot and humid conditions. So in the summer, if you give it a water and you've got all this thatch, you can end up with disease in the lawn. So when we scarify, we're essentially raking, so to speak, and the machine, or whether you're using a rake, you put it in and you drag it across and it thins this out. And as you... As you thin it out, it's creating grooves, which allows the soil to receive air, rain and nutrients so it can breathe and perform better. Now, when we aerate, we're punching a hole about the size of your little finger in. And what it's doing, you've got surface thatch, which is what we scarify for. And then we have what's called subsurface thatch, which is just below the surface of the soil. Now, aeration takes a plug of soil up and out. And so now, everything can get down through this thatch and this subsurface thatch and to the roots. And when it's spread across the lawn, thousands of holes, the water can get straight in and seep out into surrounding areas. 
so it performs better. On clay soils, this helps with drainage to a certain degree. So that is why we scarify and why we aerate. Now, depending on how you're going to aerate, you could do it with a garden fork and just push your fork in, wiggle it backwards and forwards, and that will help. It will open up the soil and let everything drain through. Although you are technically pushing soil further down, creating some sort of compaction. But our grandparents and their grandparents used garden forks for many years with no problems. So if that's all you've got and you've only got a small lawn, go for it with a garden fork. You can buy a manual aerator. I haven't brought one with me today, but I've done videos on manual aerator tools. And basically it's something like this with a hole in the bottom. It'll be a tool, it'll have three on, one, two, three, with a little section like this at the bottom. And you put it into the ground and it will pull a core of soil out. And again, it's doing the process of aeration. So as we push it up, just to see, now it doesn't look like much, but remember, we've got the thatch at the top. Okay. And that, my fingernail is where I trapped it in the car door about four weeks ago. I've been, apparently I've been putting nail varnish on. <laughs> so yeah, this thatch, and then you've got the subsurface thatch just below the surface. It all needs thinning out, so it enables the ground to breathe and perform better. And you know, most problems on a lawn can be fixed with a scarifying area every single year. It's definitely worth doing, absolutely. These ramps only just reach with a brick under them at the bottom. So I'm walking backwards so I can hold the machine and stop it rolling away from me. I'm walking in between and just supporting the machine as it comes down. Now for the aerator. This one's heavier. I think when I did this lawn last year or the year before, I was using the other aerator. So in terms of scarifying, you can start off with one of these and uh, it's got a few different names. I actually call this a spring bock rake. And if you look online, sometimes they're called spring tine rakes or spring bock. It's the metal ones. I prefer the one where that piece of metal is there, keeping them all strong and rigid. This is the cheapest way to scarify, but it's also the most physical. So I've raked it or scarified it and it's raked out some of this matter and there are now grooves in the soil. Now that's perfectly fine but it does require a bit of work. Just do a section, have a rest and then do another section and in time you can get your whole lawn done. Then we upgrade. This is made by Wolf Garten. I'll leave a link to everything I speak about in the description just below this video. But these come with a 10 year warranty. You can get a metal handle or these, I think it's ash, but 10 year warranty and it's actually brilliant. Press the button, pop that out. And there's several different heads you can buy for these uh, to go on these and they're all interchangeable. This is the scarifying rake attachment. And these are incredibly sharp, even now. And I've had this about three years and you literally just drag this, but it's a lot more effective and it draws a lot more out than the metal rake. So if we watch, that's just one. But you can see in about the same amount of time, it's pulled twice as much out. So it's twice as effective as those. And it's taking you to where you need to be. Now, from here, you can upgrade to a scarifying machine and you can pay all sorts of prices. Um, Aldi and Screwfix, 
I think they're about 70, 80 pounds, but they've only got little metal spoky things. Um, some of them have little blades on, but in general, they're okay and they are faster than using these. Or you can upgrade to a basic scarifier with blades for about 120, 140 pounds, something like that. I'll leave a link to that as well. My machine's middle of the range is about five, six hundred pounds, but you can go up to two and a half, three thousand pounds easily. And they are a lot more powerful and they can go through big, thick layers of thatch dead easy. So I'm going to crack on with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to aerate first. It doesn't really matter when you are only scarifying and aerating. Sometimes when I'm seeding, I will scarify first and then aerate just to get it all cleared off and then got a good seed bed. Let's get some sun, baby, it's time to go. And you just literally push this like a mower. Now, you can adjust the height of the blades that are underneath there. You want them to be going down through the grass and the thatch. There's the soil. And you want them just scraping the surface of the soil. So there's little grooves in the soil. And then everything above that will get raked out. Sometimes you have to scarify a couple of times, but we'll see how we get on. And when you buy one a machine, they do sometimes come with a box on, but the boxes will fill up like every few meters. So you're better off just taking the box off and just letting it all spill out across the lawn and then raking it up. But that's entirely up to you. What I do, I lift this back flap up, but I don't have it too high because if we hit any stones, they're going to fly out and hit me on the shins. So I've just got it open a little bit to allow the debris to fall and it helps it to scarify better. So my next step is to get this cleared up and I'm just going to use my backpack blower which is a still VR500 I think and uh, I'll go down the sides, blow it into the middle and I'll try and bring it up a little bit and then I can just use the leaf grabbers and get everything picked up so we'll get that sorted now. You 
Don't forget your first love We were young and wild We were up all night You don't forget that summer sun 2009 We were feeling high And I got drunk for Right, so in this corner it's very mossy now you've got a couple of choices here. You can thin it out a little bit and hope that any grass what's left will poke through as we get more into the year and the nicer, warmer weather comes. Or you just rake it out entirely and then do an overseed. So it's entirely up to you. If you don't want to overseed, then just thin it out. But uh, it all depends how much grass is actually left. You see a little section here. Oh, that is quite bare down here. I think the dog actually runs around here. So they might want to chuck a bit of seed down here. But yeah, so literally I'm using the scarifying rake. I'm just, I'm letting it rest in my hands. I'm not pushing down. I'm just resting it and just gently pulling back. Backwards and forwards. And the moss is coming out quite easy. Drunk for the first time I thought I was cool I thought I looked smooth in your eyes And tried to make a move It was all my time The time of our lives You were on my mind My right or die It was all my time The time of our lives You were on my mind My right or die Yeah so I'll use there is this bulldog leaf rake wooden handle but you can get metal handles and the green plastic these are great for clearing it up into piles which you can see we've done and now I'm going to get the leaf grabbers which are over here and there's a few different sorts of leaf grabbers I recommend these heavy duty ones because these have lasted me about four or five years, if not longer. There are some cheaper ones which look the same, but they're a lot thinner, especially on these handles. And what happens is after time, this little bolt here in the middle, it tends to warp. So you find that these are sort of twisted a bit, and then you end up with gaps like that, and everything falls out. I mean, they're okay, but uh, this is still pretty good. And literally all you do... You just pick it up and put it into your bin, into a black bag or into a white tum bag, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to crack on and get this sorted. Okay, let's try again. That's going to be interesting. Hopefully. Oh. 
steps complete that's looking pretty handsome I'm pleased with that like I say in about six weeks this will have all recovered and gone back to a nice normal lawn and um, it's going to be ready for summer then we will be back in a month or so to put some fertilizer on and that'll just help get it going now coming up on the screen in just a minute will be some videos that discuss seeding and top dressing which are more steps that you would normally do um, after you've scarified and aerated depending if you've got any thin areas or things like that sometimes you can overseed every year no matter what just to keep it nice and thick and there's nothing wrong with that approach sometimes you can just scarify and aerate and wait for it to recover which it will it just takes a bit longer but for the likes of these areas where I've raked all the moss out, you can see it definitely wants a bit of seed down here. So some shaded seed, some hardware in shaded seed. But overall, this is going to come up great. So uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to check out the videos now on either side. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. See you again. <laughs>